If a character model isn't for someone important, they get Play-Doh hair. Literally. There is absolutely nothing I like about her. It's so bad. And pretentious. I really- Look, I really didn't like this movie, guys. Hello, everybody! My name's Gail, and the Shanghai special came out a while ago. And I've been waiting like a good little girl for the legal English version to come out before I talked about it on this channel. Because unlike Ladybug, I really am the goodest child in the whole wide world. Write that down, Santa. It's very important. And I had some mixed expectations, to say the least. I asked you guys in a poll how you liked the movie, like and subscribe to be part of future polls, and a majority of you said it was nothing special, while a third of you said that it was good. I wanted to believe you guys, but a part of me did expect this movie to be the same level of cringe as the first one. Well, I should have never doubted you guys, because you were absolutely right. This special was... fine. Absolutely and utterly fine. Don't get me wrong, the Shanghai special isn't what I'd call great, but it is definitely miles better in quality than the New York special. The animation is much better, the extras look like people, and the cities are full of life. The plot might not be groundbreaking, but it is much more concise and purposeful than the multitudes of unfinished plot lines in its predecessor. Characters sound like themselves, the new hero isn't ripped straight out of a Marvel comic, and even our main characters actually act like decent people in this movie. It's clear to me that this movie either had a bigger budget or just more time, because in terms of production, this one actually looks like a completed movie. Which counts as progress, surprisingly. The movie starts by expositing all the parts of the movie that might have been interesting to watch so that we can skip to the part where Marinette creeps on Adrian for the 500th time. This story is about an orphan who was charged with protecting a thing by their wise, dead mentor slash parent, and oh no, they lost it, and now they have to get back that thing from greedy villains that may or may not have something to do with why the parent is dead in the first place. It's pretty easy to predict the rest of the movie from here. This main heroine is Faye. Faye is a girl who talks a lot about honor while having very little. The movie tries to put all the emotional development onto her without actually investing in that development. For example, having her entire backstory be exposited in five minutes by just a disembodied voice over flashback footage. Not the best way to introduce your main character. She's an orphan, her adoptive father died, she's homeless and has to make money by pawning off others' possessions. They really hammered in the sad origin story so that when she overcomes her troubles, it will leave an impact, right? Well... Faye goes through a character growth arc without really growing, and without being a character. Her personality is troubled, single-minded teen. She doesn't really have likes or dislikes other than likes good things, doesn't like bad things. She has no quirks, very few relationships, and generic flaws. She just has no substance as a character. If I said she baked cookies for the local nursing home or she's a mechanic in her spare time, would you be able to tell me if either seems out of character for her? And the culmination of her character is to become Lady Dragon, the Ren Ren person thing. But they set it up so poorly that her transformation into that main character is emotionless. First, she gets her powers super easily once the prodigious is found. She kind of just grabs it and wears it. No drama or conflict, it's easily put on because she hardly has to fight anyone for it. Second, she masters her powers with little to no effort. Lady Dragon's powers work by her embodying a virtue which allows her to transform into an ugly red and yellow beast. Except, by the time she gets to use these powers, the movie is at its climax. It needs to end soon. So when the Renlings, 
the Chinese Kwame-like creatures, tell her the virtues she needs to embody to use their power, she just gets it. Even though by this time in the movie she has just started to realize she's kind of been an awful human being, she already embodies these virtues perfectly. She has discipline, calmness, patience, courage, honor, compassion, confidence. All these perfect qualities that she didn't demonstrate in the entire movie except for one 10 second segment where she helps three people which is promptly followed by her stealing things. Where was her honor when she was casing tourists for their valuables? Where was her patience when she was so desperate to learn about the dojo's arsonist that she turned to crime? You're telling me this girl's only flaw is her lack of justice? Because if that was really true, we wouldn't have a movie. So instead of feeling conflicted or excited or surprised by Lady Dragon and her powers, it's just as boring and ordinary as every other superhero we've been introduced to. But with a movie runtime. Not to mention for a character whose powers were described as more destructive than the miraculous, her powers are pretty tame. I mean, she can move through time at will, and he can create portals connecting any two locations of his choice, but turning into a mantis is cool, I guess. The only time Faye gets close to character growth is when she talks to Marinette about the difference between revenge and justice, the one thing that's stopping her from becoming her most powerful dragon form which is just a copy of the Dragon Miraculous, but uh, let's ignore that part. The reason this doesn't hit well for me, especially with the previous stuff that I've just talked about, is also because Faye herself doesn't really have the realization or any will to change herself. A lot of it seems driven more by Marinette telling Faye how to be a good person rather than Faye realizing what it is to be a good person on her own. Which isn't too bad because Marinette is sort of our main character in this movie, but it does make an already bland character who had trouble standing out on her own even more bland versus her having a moment of self-realization where maybe she could have remembered teachings from her wise mentor father or something from her background that inspired her to turn from revenge into proper justice therefore making her powers come back through her own self-growth and realization versus her unlocking her powers because she followed advice from this chick that she met today, maybe four hours ago, who just seems to just be the embodiment of good in this movie. So, yeah. <laughs> but Faye is far from the only character in this movie, and everyone else is surprisingly competent after the first 15 minutes. It does take some awfully convenient, oh my gosh, it's my uncle's birthday. Ah, my dad's opening a Shanghai store. Oops, we have money for plane tickets. You just had to ask to get there. But like, I get it. They didn't want to waste 45 minutes just getting our main characters to the movie's location. So I'll forgive this particular contrivance. Marinette is her typical stalker self, but that isn't really focused on in this movie. It mostly focuses on her belief in others. And it is an admirable quality to focus on, how she relies on others in her time of need with no doubts as to their motives. And it's also a good contrast with Faye and her innate judgment of people. Now, keep in mind this is still a kid's movie, so obviously this isn't taken as far or as deeply as it could be, but it is at least some thematic comparisons. Otherwise, Marinette is a decent protagonist who I actually like in this movie as opposed to her more abrasive self in the New York special. Adrian... Okay, let's be honest here. Adrian is his perfect cinnamon roll self and he does attempt to help throughout the movie, but he's even more useless than in the New York special. At least in that movie, he had emotional moments with Marinette, but in this movie, he's used to get Marinette into Shanghai and to get her lost and very little else. Even Cat Noir is useless with his total contribution to the movie being one cataclysm. Yep, 
once again, one cataclysm. They really couldn't think of any way to use a boy with a dead parent backstory who happens to be a superhero in a movie about a girl with a dead parent backstory getting superpowers. To me, that interaction should just write itself. So overall, yeah, this movie is fine. The animation is good, the quality is good, the story is uninspired, but it has a beginning, a middle, and an end that all tie together and make sense, so it's fine. The characters we know are decent human beings, the new characters are... Okay, well, they're characters at best, but at least they aren't blatant ripoffs, so that's something. There isn't anything spectacular in this movie, but there also isn't anything so horrible that I despise it either. Just a perfectly average TV show movie. So, having said all that, honestly, I would rather watch the New York special again. I know, I know, that's ridiculous. I hated the other movie with a passion. I said this one looks great and is at least decent story-wise. So why on God's green earth would I watch the New York special over this one? The answer's pretty simple, actually. The Shanghai special was so boring. At least the New York special had moments that tried to be exciting. Marinette trying to get along with Adrian as a friend, Cat Noir abandoning his miraculous, the chase in the rain. These were all moments that were at least trying to tug at your heartstrings, trying to make you see something new for these characters, even if they ultimately failed. But the Shanghai special doesn't even try to have any of those moments. Marinette and Adrian have one real scene together. Faye is as interesting as a stack of bricks, and Ladybug and Cat Noir are doing just fine. Nothing worth watching happens in this movie. I will always take a poor attempt at an interesting movie over a passable attempt at an ordinary one. There is nothing in this movie that makes me question anything, learn anything new about these characters, or want to come back. It just was a typical adventure for Ladybug that went a little longer than 30 minutes. So yeah, that's my opinion of the Shanghai special. I hope this is all that you dreamt of and more. If you like this kind of comment, leave a like and subscribe so that you can hear my thoughts on season 4. Because boy howdy am I sure that I will have opinions on that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next rant. Bye bye Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.